Pretty much everybody who's ever watched a movie has heard the name Steven Spielberg. After all, he is one of the most influential people in the history of cinema, and probably Hollywood's best known film director. Through years in the industry, he's built an amazing portfolio of blockbuster movies with both commercially and critically acclaimed films. He's mostly known as a director, but he is also a screenwriter and notable producer. His popular rise to fame started with the 1975 movie Jaws, and thereafter, through his work, he's defined the popular filmmaking techniques of today that we so love and have become so accustomed to. So how did his journey start out? Well, Steven Spielberg was born on December 18, 1946 in Cincinnati, Ohio. His paternal grandparents were Jewish Russian immigrants who settled in Cincinnati in the 1900s. In his early teens, his family moved to Phoenix, Arizona, and attended a Hebrew school from 1953 to 1957. As a young child, he was often bullied for being Jewish, and it took him quite some time to reconcile himself to being an Orthodox Jew. After all, these were different times, and the Second World War had barely happened 10 years prior. It's at the age of 12 that he made his first 8mm movie. Spielberg dubs the movie as a train wreck involving his toy Lionel Trains. Obviously, it was a homemade movie and he was still a kid, so I don't think that he should be too hard on himself. While attending college, he was offered a small unpaid intern job at Universal Studios with the editing department. It was during this time that he was given the opportunity to make a short film for theatrical release. The 26-minute 35mm film is entitled Ambling, which he wrote and directed. This movie went on to win a bunch of awards. Sidney Scheinberg, who was studio vice president at Universal, saw the movie and was impressed by it and offered Spielberg a seven-year directing contract. It made him the youngest director to ever be signed for a long-term deal with a major Hollywood studio. He subsequently dropped out of college to begin professionally directing TV productions with Universal. He did eventually return to California State University, Long Beach, and completed his BA degree in film and electronic arts in 2002. His first professional directing job was in 1969 directing a TV pilot episode of Night Gallery starring Joan Crawford. Apparently Crawford was speechless and horrified at the thought of a 21-year-old newcomer directing her. But as she started working with him, her attitude changed very fast and she even stated that Spielberg was a genius. They both remained close friends until her death. The pilot episode was shot by Spielberg and is much more stylized than his later mature films. After this initial paid gig, he got his full feature assignment directing an episode of The Name of the Game entitled LA 2017. After impressing the studio even more, Spielberg went on to do another segment on Night Gallery and worked on shows such as Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law, The Psychiatrist, and even the first TV episode of Columbo. Based on the strength of his work, Universal signed Spielberg to do four TV films. The first TV movie that he did was the 1971 movie Duel. This film is based on a short story written by Richard Matson and tells the story of a psychotic Peterbilt 281 tanker truck driver who chases a commuter from California driving a small Plymouth Valiant. He soon finds himself being chased by the mostly unseen driver who chases and terrorizes him throughout the film. This was originally a TV movie but later got a theatrical release with extended footage. This movie was critically acclaimed and recognized as an influential cult classic. Steven Spielberg's actual first debut feature was the 1974 movie The Sugarland Express starring Goldie Hawn. This movie was based on a real life story and tells the story of a husband and wife who take a police officer hostage as they flee across the United States in order to retrieve their child who was placed in foster care. The film did pretty poorly at the box office, but reviewers gave good feedback for the cinematography and the police car chase scenes. Soon after, in 1975, studio producers Richard D. Zanuck and David Brown offered Steven Spielberg the movie Jaws, which is a horror thriller based on the novel by Peter Benchley, and tells the story of a man eating great white shark that attacks beachgoers at a summer resort town. This prompts police chief Martin Brody to go on the hunt for that shark with the help of a marine biologist and a professional shark hunter. This movie was primarily filmed in Massachusetts and was the first major 
motion picture to be shot on the ocean. Because of the difficulties of filming at sea and a mechanic shard that kept on malfunctioning, major production hiccups almost resulted in the movie production getting shut down. Because of this, Spielberg avoided wanting to see the shark in the shots and used a lot of point of views from the white shark's perspective alluding to his presence. This was actually one of the reasons why they hired composer John Williams to create a minimalist ambient shark theme whenever the shark was approaching its victims. The theme is composed of a simple alternating pattern of two notes, variously identified as E and F, or F and F sharp. This two-note music led to becoming one of the most recognized pieces of suspense music synonymous with approaching danger. This approach made many reviewers compare Spielberg to the suggestive approach of director Alfred Hitchcock. Upon completion, Universal released the movie to 450 screens, which was very extensive at the time, and a very big marketing campaign filled with tie-in merchandise and television spots. Jaws was an enormous hit, winning three Academy Awards for editing, original score, and sound, and grossed more than $470 million at the worldwide box office. It also set the domestic record for box office gross, leading to what press describes as Jaws mania. Thanks to this film, Spielberg became a household name and allowed him autonomy for his future projects. This did lead him to getting offers to direct Jaws 2, King Kong, and Superman, which he declined because he wanted to develop another movie about UFOs, which became Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which was released in 1977. This movie is written and directed by Steven Spielberg and was a project he had been developing since late 1973 when he made a deal with Columbia Pictures for a science fiction film. This movie has two parallel storylines. One is about a French scientist, Claude Lacombe, and an American interpreter, David Loughlin, who discovers a squadron of World War II airplanes that disappeared more than 30 years ago in the Bermuda Triangle. The planes are all intact and operational, but the pilot bodies are nowhere to be seen. An old man who was at the side that night claims that the sun came out at night and sank to him. The other story happens on the same night where an electrical maintenance worker, Roy Neary, is investigating one out of a series of sudden large power outages across Indiana. There he experiences a close encounter with a UFO when it hovers over his truck, affecting all of the truck's electrical system and slightly burning the side of his face with bright light. Refusing to accept the explanation for what he saw and not wanting to appear crazy, he becomes obsessed with investigating what happened to him and understanding what the meaning of his mountain-like vision that he keeps on having since his encounter is. Close Encounters was a critical box office hit, giving Spielberg his first Best Director nomination from the Academy, as well as earning six other Academy nominations. It won Oscars for Best Cinematography and Sound Effects. After the success of this movie, he made the film 1941, which is an American period comedy action comedy film directed by Spielberg and written by Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale, who will eventually make the movie Back to the Future in 1985, which happens to be produced by Spielberg. According to co-writer Bob Gale, he stated that the plot is loosely based on what has come to be known as the Great Los Angeles Air Raid of 1942, as well as the bombardment of the Elwood Oil Refinery near Santa Barbara by a Japanese submarine. Many of the events in the movie were based on real incidents, including the Zoot Suit Riots and an incident in which the US Army placed an anti-aircraft gun in a homeowner's yard on the main coast. This wasn't one of the biggest Spielberg successes, but still did okay and did even better after ABC aired it as an expanded version of TV. This concludes the first of three videos on Spielberg. The second video will speak about Steven Spielberg's career throughout the 80s and 90s. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to subscribe and smash the like button. Let me know if you have any Spielberg anecdotes or what your favorite film of his is. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.